I'll take baseline baselines for a thousand, Alex. These are the two most awesome notes on bass. What are roots and fifths? Yes, you got it for a thousand. If you've seen my shapes video, then you're already familiar with the root fifth shape. Shapes! In this video, we're gonna dive deeper into exactly why roots and fifths are the most awesomest of notes on bass, how tons of popular bass lines use nothing but roots and fifths, and how you can use them to create your own great bass lines in any style, even as a beginner. If you're not already familiar with roots and fifths, here's a 47 second primer. Start the clock! Lots of bass lines just use root notes, which come from the chords that the guitar or the keys are playing. So if you play this, then you're playing root notes, which is your main job as a bass player. But you can also add the fifth to each root, which sounds like this. The fifth is just the fifth note of the major or minor scale for that root. So if my root note is C, and I walk up the C major scale, one, two, three, four, five, C, D, E, F, G, G is the fifth of C. Same thing happens if I use C minor, one, two, three, four, five, C, D, E flat, F, G, I still land on G. So you can easily find root fifth on the bass using this shape, up a string and up two frets, whether you know the scales or not. Adding fifths can give you more energy and flavor in your bass lines without distracting from the song, and they work in almost any style. But why? Why is the fifth so special? Well, because science. Science! Hello, Science Josh here to explain why the fifth is the note to add to your roots. You can tell different notes apart because they vibrate at different speeds. Notes that sound high are vibrating fast, low notes are vibrating slower. And the speed at which notes vibrate is called frequency. When you hear two notes at the same time that are vibrating at different speeds, they'll either sound like ah or like ah. So they'll either feel stable ah or unstable. Ah! That feeling comes from the ratio or relationship between the two frequencies. On this side of the spectrum, simple ratios like one to one, which would just be two of the same note, or a two to one ratio, one note vibrating twice as fast as the other, which is an octave, those sound super stable or consonant. As the ratios between notes get more complex, it sounds less and less stable and more unstable or dissonant. So a three to two ratio, meaning one note is vibrating 50% faster, gives you root fifth, which lands in the perfect sweet spot on the spectrum to give enough instability to make interesting bass lines, but not so much it distracts from the song and gets you fired. This also applies to playing one note at a time in a bass line. Simple number ratios between notes, like the root fifth pattern at the beginning of My Girl, sound super stable. Complex number ratios, like the tritone found at the beginning of YYZ by Rush, sound unstable. Simple numbers, like the root fifth in 99 and a half won't do by Wilson Pickett, sound super stable. Complex numbers like the half step or minor second found in the Jaws theme. Unstable. You're gonna need a bigger bass. So here's the science takeaway. The fifth, which has a three to two relationship to the frequency of the root note, is at the perfect sweet spot of interesting but still stable enough for us bass players. And that stability translates musically, whether you play root fifth at the same time, like a guitarist might in a power chord, or if you're playing one note at a time, like we do in most bass lines. Science Josh out. Back to you, Josh. Is it just me or does that guy look kind of familiar? Anyway, uh, because of the stability of the fifth, it fits really nicely with the root note, giving you just a splash of variety in your bass line without standing out too much. Let's test this idea out with the intro of Sitting on the Dock of the Bay by Otis Redding. It's a classic root and fifth bass intro, which should sound like this. So check out how yuck it is if I play some other notes from the scale in a similar bass line. I'll try the sixth. Blech. 
Here's the third. Not really. Here's the fourth. Ugh. So see how they all kind of stand out too much? Here's what that sounds like again with the fifth in place. Just feel how much better the bass sits in the track. You can play along with me if you want or not. We're just going to kind of speed through all the riffs in this video. Here we go. Sitting in the morning sun. For $200, you should click like, then subscribe and ring the bell for notifications to this channel. What is bass buzz? Yes. Another way the fifth helps your bass lines is to add momentum, again without drawing too much attention. So let's check that out on Under Pressure by Queen, another great root fifth bass line. So this bass line starts on the root note, which is the D on the 12th fret of the D string, but then it uses the fifth below the root note instead of above, which you can find by dropping down a string on the same fret, like this. So this low shape is musically equivalent to the high shape since it's the same note name. If I go up for the fifth, up a string up two frets, I get an A. If I go down a string same fret, I also get an A. They're just an octave apart. So the root note is the one on the 12th fret of the D string, and then that's the fifth down below on the A string. So we all know this bass line, it's supposed to sound like this. But what if we didn't get to hit that fifth at the end, so the bass line was just sitting on the root the whole time? Check it out. Super boring, right? That one fifth at the end makes a huge difference by adding that momentum that makes us want to get back to the root. Da -da. But it doesn't inject the complex frequency ratios like this or this that would clash and distract from the vocal melody. So again, here's what that's supposed to sound like and just feel how important that one little fifth at the end is. Because the fifth fits in the major and minor scales, it works on major and minor chords, which make up the vast majority of chords in most styles of music. So it doesn't actually matter whether you're hearing a C major chord or a C minor chord, all you have to do is find your root note, a C, and then grab the fifth either up a string and up two frets, or down a string same fret. That versatility makes it a safe choice if you're a beginner, you want to spice up your bass lines without making the rest of the band grimace, but maybe you don't have the ear yet to distinguish major from minor chords. You can see this working in real life in the song On the Other Side by The Strokes, which sounds like this. a really cool root fifth bass line that actually starts on the fifth it goes fifth root fifth root fifth root fifth root and if you look here at the chord symbols you can see we're starting on a G minor chord and then we go to an E flat major chord but we play the same bass line with the same shape on both chords we just grab the fifth above the G on the G minor chord just up a string up two frets shape and then same thing on the E flat major you just find the E flat grab the same shape up a string and up two frets so it's the same shape on a major chord and on a minor chord, super versatile. The fifth is so important for us as bass players that I dedicated a full two modules to it in my Beginner to Badass course, which you can check out over at BassBuzz.com. But the trick to applying the fifth to different styles is using the right rhythms for those styles. Because you can totally transform the same roots and fifths just by changing the rhythm. I can make roots and fifths sound like country. Yeehaw! I can make it sound like reggae make sound like bossa nova. I can make it sound like rock. So here's a three-step rhythm generator you can use for different styles. Step one is pick a bass line from that style. Step two is steal the rhythm. Don't worry, bass lines don't mind. Step three is plug in some roots and fifths onto that rhythm. So I'll walk you through how to do that in a few different styles, and I'll also show you how we can apply these formulas to a sample chord chart. So what if we wanted a country formula? So step one, we got to pick an iconic bass line in the style. How about Walk the Line by Johnny Cash, which is going to sound like this. I keep a close watch on this heart of mine. I keep my eyes wide open all the time. 
I keep the ends out for the tide. So now step two is steal the rhythm, which is just gonna be quarter notes, or these could be written as half notes depending on how you count this. And then step three, add roots and fifths. So this bass line already has roots and fifths in it for us. It just alternates root, fifth, root, fifth, and it goes to the next chord, root, fifth, root, fifth, which is very typical of this style. And this works for country, polka, bluegrass, and lots of other two beat style music, even jazz two beats. So here's a sample chord chart that we can apply our new country formula to. So first you find a G, then you play root, fifth, root, fifth, then find a D, root, fifth, root, fifth, find an E, then a C, and boom, you've got a country style bass line for this progression. And you can mix up the high shape or the low shape to find the fifth however you want. I can go high, and then low, low, high, however you wanna do it. All right, how about a bossa nova formula? So step one, we gotta pick a good bass line. How about Song For My Father by Horace Silver, which sounds like this. <laughs> Okay, so then step two, we gotta steal the rhythm, which is just dotted quarter, eighth, dotted quarter, eighth. One, two, and three, four, and one. And then step three, you plug in the roots and fifths, which again is already done for us here. The most typical way to do it is root, fifth, fifth, root, root, fifth, fifth. So the bossa nova formula actually depends on whether you're playing a jazz style bossa nova like Horace Silver or a more traditional Brazilian bossa nova. So what if we pulled a more traditional baseline example, like from this Getz Gilberto recording of The Girl from Ipanema, which sounds like this. Moça do corpo dourado, do sol de Ipanema, o seu balançado é mais que um poema, é a coisa mais linda que eu já vi passar. So you can see in step two, we're gonna steal a different rhythm here. It's just half notes. And then step three, when we add the roots and fifths, we're mostly just going root, fifth on each chord. But sometimes you can double up on a root in this style instead of playing the fifth. So if we analyze this bass line, he's playing root, fifth, root, root on the D flat chord, root, fifth, root, root on the E flat chord, and then root, fifth, root, root on the A flat chord, just with a different octave placement and then root fifth, root fifth on the D flat again. And by the way, quick shout out to Adam Neely who made an awesome mini documentary about this song, Girl From Ipanema. So there's a link in the description, you can check that out. So how would you apply the bossa nova formulas to a sample chord chart? You can either do the jazz style, dotted quarter eighth, dotted quarter eighth, and just walk through the progression. One, two, and three, four, and one. And three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and one. Or we could do a more Brazilian feel just playing half notes. So let's make this two bars of each chord so it'll work a little better for this. So we can just play root, fifth, maybe double up on the root sometimes. Root, root, fifth, root, 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 fifth, root, 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 fifth, root, fifth, however you want to do it. Easy. So what about soul music? There's no one soul formula, but you can start building a library of soul rhythms that work by using this three-step rhythm generator. So for step one, let's just grab that example earlier from uh, Sitting on the Dock of the Bay by Otis Redding. So if we look at this bass line, we're gonna steal the rhythm, which is dotted quarter, eighth quarter, quarter, one, two, and three, four. And then step three, we plug in the roots and fifths, which we can either do the way Duck Dunn did, which was root, root fifth, fifth, with a little slide, but we could also mix that up and go root, 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 fifth, or root, fifth, 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 or root, fifth, root, fifth. Those are all great options you could explore when creating a bass line. So how do you put that in practice to make a sole bass line for this sample chart? We'll take the rhythm, one, two, and three, four, and we'll try some different root fifth patterns. So I could go root, root fifth, root, then I could try root, root fifth, fifth, and on the E I could try root, root, root fifth, and then root, fifth, root, fifth. So a bunch of different patterns I can try using that formula. So what about rock? I wanna rock! Again, there's no one formula that's gonna work for all rock because there's so much variety within the genre, but if you keep running the three steps, you can start to get a handle on what your options are within the style. So what if we start with something really easy for step one, like a Ramon song? This is a little clip from Bonzo Goes to Bitburg. Pieces, 
so now step two, we gotta steal that rhythm. Da na 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 na. And step three is to add the roots and fifths. In this case, we don't have an existing root fifth pattern we can borrow, so you're gonna have to make up your own. So how do you make the sample song rock? We'll take that Ramones rhythm we just played, da na 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 and we'll play mostly root notes, but you can throw in fifths wherever you want. I could try something like this. So there's lots more to learn to be a master of roots and fifths, but even if you're a total beginner and learning full songs by ear is out of your reach, you can still use this three-step rhythm generator because all you have to do is listen for the rhythm. Thanks for sticking around. Science Josh, you got any more science for us? Sure, how about some natural science? <laughs>